Bank runs, bank holidays, and capital controls have become prevalent within the system and they are spreading to your doorstep. So today we will discuss how these gluttonous pigs have been consuming debt at record levels. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. We have an absolutely jam-packed episode today, something that is becoming more frequent here on the channel. Let's look at this right away. A record of 93.6 million Americans not in the labor force. The participation rate has also declined to 62.6%. These are the numbers that I've been covering regularly, consistently updating you as they continue to, to decline. The labor force participation rate dropped to 62.6%. That's a 38-year low. We're looking at the worst numbers we've seen in 38 years. But what happened here? What's going on with the jobs numbers? Well, according to the government, we have this. U.S. unemployment rate falls to a seven-year low, but they mentioned that wages are flat. So seven-year low, wow, the economy must be doing very well. U.S. unemployment fell to a seven-year low of 5.3%. Can you believe that? But a wave of people stopped looking for work and paychecks failed to budge. So that stop looking for work is the key indicator there as we see many people falling off of the unemployment statistics. What's very silly about this is that the unemployment rate could fall to 0% and they would celebrate this as reality. But as I just discussed in the previous indicators here, we're looking at a very bad situation for the employment rate. Things are not getting better. They're definitely getting worse. The figures indicate that the economy is improving slowly following a first quarter slump rather than surging ahead as consumer spending strengthens. Well, consumer spending is very, very tricky because we see that individuals are definitely cash strapped. They do use all of their debt in order to purchase what they need. There is no more cash essentially available for people they're all consuming with their debt but these numbers here are definitely skewed i've gone into this before what i also want to note is that there isn't really an improvement in the economy at all this is pretty much a piece of propaganda that we see over and over again Let's move on to this here out of CNBC. U.S. planned layoffs totaled 44,800 44, in June. And we could see that nearly, fi nearly 50,000 uh, U.S. planned layoffs. What we have here is a dwindling economy. This is something that has been going on. We saw when oil began to drop, how people simply were dropping out of the labor force at quite a l alarming rate. Let's look at this here. Illinois, we're looking at a debt-ridden state. Illinois is heading towards a state government shutdown after the legislature adjourned without closing a 6.2 billion dollar gap passing the budget by the july 1st deadline this is just one state of many that are in trouble all the cities and the counties and if you look to other places in the world you see the provincial numbers you see the national figures everyone's in debt they're all in debt because that's how the system is set up the current annual deficit is $9 billion, which is project projected to grow to $14 billion by fiscal year 2026. So they have a big problem. They could even figure it out by their deadline. And they're saying that the debt is actually going to increase by $5 billion in a few years from now. So you have a unbelievable rate of debt accumulation that has been going on it's not just illinois i'm only using this to illustrate my point it is all nations all cities all states all provinces around the world consistently going into more debt collapsing the system from within but of course that is the intention and right here we're looking at the 
Puerto Rico situation. Unable to pay its $73 billion in debt, Puerto Rico has begun rationing water, closing schools, and watching its health care system collapse, and 45% of its people living in poverty. Okay, this is a very serious issue here, partially because where do you think these people are going? Well, undoubtedly, they are fleeing the Caribbean island in search of a better life in the United States, only to find hardship and struggle on the American shores. But they are definitely going to give it a try. That's what many individuals have been doing, coming up mostly through the Mexican border and into the U.S., and this is the way it has been working. But look at the serious scenario that when you have a problem of debt, you may even have to ration water. You may have to close the schools, the healthcare system, people living in poverty right now because of this debt. It's not just that the nation finds itself in debt and your life goes on as normal. Things change rapidly. You could have shortages that appear very quickly you could have a basically a cutting off of the resources as we have seen particularly over in asia this has occurred multiple times in history in my book the money gps i talked about the extra burden that's put upon the nations that basically take on too much debt and try to be too heroic the U.S. government took over Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac in order to prevent them from going bankrupt due to the lack of confidence in the housing market. And I'm being very, very, um, let's just say, trying to be nice about the situation. Their debt of nearly $6 trillion will burden U.S. citizens. These companies now have the extra advantage of being backed by the U.S. taxpayer, just in case anything goes wrong. And this is the moral hazard that has been created. As long as you create enough debt upon you, you become too big to fail. And then, of course, you'll get bailed out. This is a situation that we have seen now with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. We saw with GM and others, all of these companies, they take the money, they either use it on their CEO bonuses or they open up factories overseas. This is nothing but a burden upon the taxpayer. Defiant Varoufakis says he will quit if Greece, Greeks endorse austerity. Now, of course, need to cover the Greek issue very quickly. Basically, the finance minister saying, if they vote yes, I'm quitting. So we'll see what happens here. That's all I wanted to mention for this article out of Bloomberg. And to move on further down in another article here, we see that there is a limit on the withdrawals, the capital controls, of course, within Greece. Cash is harder and harder to come by with daily limits uh, of 60 euros. There are so many curbs on credit cards, international transfers, or other purchases that euros in the bank may literally become less valuable than cash. And that's from a professor of economics at the University of London. For stores that only accept cash, which is common in Greece, or for transactions outside of Greece, one's bank deposits are useless. The value of a euro in the bank is strictly below the value of the euro in one's pocket. If the bank holiday continues, we could see a situation where bank deposits are exchanged for cash at a discount. This is such a serious scenario that we are witnessing live before our very eyes within Greece. I warned about the bank runs. I warned about bank holidays and capital controls and everything that would take place in a domino effect that will go on. I called it the Euro viral contagion in my book. And today we are seeing that. We are witnessing it today right now. But nobody is alarmed by it because they're saying, it's not in my doorstep. I don't need to worry about it. But you do. We have Greeks, people 
Greek people who are here on this channel commenting, saying they're in the middle of this scenario and it is bad, it is looking bad, it is getting worse as the days press on. You cannot have capital in controls imposed for too long without it collapsing the system because the people are going to become desperate for the things that they need. If they have an emergency scenario, they can't get their money out of their accounts. Hopefully, they stuff that under their mattress and then, as it says here, will become more valuable. This is why real goods are essential to hold. When you have uh, money in the banking system, you're basically funding their uh, criminality that goes on with the fractional reserve banking and all of that. You cannot fund the bankers. This is what they want you to do. Instead, if you take your money out, at least if you were to stuff it under the mattress, it would be a hundred times better than keeping it in the bank. But better than that is to take that cash and invest it into real assets, whatever you can afford. If all you can afford is a handful of junk or common coin silver, well, then you've done great. What about some storable food? What about some of the basics that you need in your everyday life? This is very important. And that's all for the video for today. I hope you found it informative. Of course, if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And last but not least, just wanted to uh, say that if you found it informative, you'll definitely find my book, The Money GPS, even more informative. And you can actually read through the book or flip through the book for yourself, if you go over to Amazon, they have this look inside feature and that allows you to flip through the book and see if you like it for yourself. Now, if you've made it to the end of the video here, I just wanted to drop a little hint and that is I have been working on a second book. So it will be part of the Money GPS series here. And essentially what I've done is taken the Money GPS Insiders and I've formulated that data into a book. It's going to be shorter than the Money GPS, probably around 100 pages or so. It's going to be written really easily. The bulk of the data is from the Money GPS Insiders, those who were subscribed on there. Um, you know, it will be much of the same content. And basically what I wanted to do is because I'm not doing the Money GPS Insiders anymore, unfortunately due to financial reasons, I thought at the very least I'll take all that data and restructure it, rework it, add some information to it, and basically put it out there as a book that will be uh, definitely very affordable for everybody. So I hope there are many uh, people who are interested in that as well. Take care.